preserving indigenous knowledge is also the job of Dina Dart. She is the curator of the Native American art exhibit at the Portland Art Museum. Dina was not able to visit the Plank House for her presentation this year, so we came to the museum for a special tour. It's important to the Chinook people to um, let the world know that they're still here, that they're still practicing the sustainable way of harvesting and the artistic practices that they always have. And one of my goals as curator of Native American art here at the Portland Art Museum is to facilitate access to art, our historic art collection so that their carvers and weavers can come in and spend time with those ancestral objects, replicate them or, or be inspired by them to help their artistic practices stay vibrant and alive as well. It's literally impossible to speak to the changing landscape of the Columbia Plateau or the, the settler population of the Columbia Plateau while standing in front of a basket. You can talk about how the environment informed the weaver 200 years ago because you can see the river ripples or the mountain design, right? But you can't speak to the change in resources. You can't really speak to climate change and the lack of those resources or the difficulty that the weavers now have in obtaining the resources to weave. But with the Joe Federson piece, you can speak to these new innovations and things that have come into the Columbia Plateau that now inform the artists as well. So they're informed by their ancestors and their ancestral language and their ancestral place. But that ancestral place looks different than it did 150 years ago. It's been my goal since I came to the Portland Art Museum three years ago to bridge this incredible historic collection that exists in this, in this museum uh, with, with contemporary works, not just contemporary works that mimic works of the past that could be mistaken for historic works or works of the past, but edgy uh, contemporary modern art um, being made by, by the Oregon Indian peoples. In this case here, we've got these three incredible historic works. We've got this bear grass dance apron, a uh, dentalium purse, and then the carved anthropomorphic figure. These objects were chosen by the elders and faculty at the Native American Youth and Family Association to tell their object story about. So Lillian Pitt chose the small anthropomorphic figure, uh, prehistoric work that has actually inspired much of her work. Many of the same design elements that show up in this prehistoric work show up in Lillian's work. The ripples of the water, the unibrow as we call it, um, the ribs. And in Lillian's piece, she's a woman in the spot of her belly button. She's got the symbol of eternity or eternal life. We can look at the object that inspired her and then we can look at the work that was the, the product of that inspiration. The Kaila Farrell Smith, um, it's called Boarding School in Mourning, and it speaks to the intergenerational trauma of the boarding school era. It's a self-portrait. It's Kaila with her hair cut the way it would have been cut had she been enrolled in a boarding school. The red lines on her face represent the mourning, the tears. If you look closely, however, her hair isn't completely gone. It's only obstructed, which speaks to her native identity. It's still very much a part of who she is, although there was an attempt to remove who she is from her biological form. The Joe Federson piece, it's called Roll Call, and it was a set of those fused glass panels um, which represent the, the folks who would show up at a roll call today in the Columbia Plateau. So it's a different cast of characters than it might have been 150 years ago, right? And the four that I chose from the, the series all represent a trickster or a, a tricky conveyor of information, right? On the bottom left, we've got the white wolf or the wolf in sheep's clothing. The flat screen, right? The TV, the, the way that the media brings us um, false truths. 
as does the magpie. The magpie in Columbia Plateau culture is, is seen as the trickster, the one that's always telling a story that may or may not be true. And then the, the guy, the white guy, um, is also a new addition to the cast of characters on the Columbia Plateau and can't always be trusted, right? <laughs> can't always um, rely upon the story that's being told. I think that we're telling a much deeper, richer, um, more relevant story, <laughs> a story about climate change, a story about social and cultural change, and um, the things that have mattered most to Indian people over the last 100 years.